Thank you. Hello and welcome to this India Today special where we are with Andhra Pradesh's possible man of the moment. Someone whom every opinion poll is suggesting could well become the next Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh. Joining me today is uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy or JMR as some call him. Not JMR but JMR. How are you Jagan? Good to see you. Completely tanned. All, this is what the sun does, is it? How many days out have you been? You, you've virtually been on the road yeah. since what? November uh, of 2017 on your Yatra? It's just 14 months then. And now the moment that is finished and then we start with the election campaign. So you've been on the road effectively for almost a year and a half. Is this, in a sense, for you the most decisive period in your political career? When I look back, it's 10 years this year that your father passed away. It's been a very turbulent period for you. If I was 10 years, if I were to look back, every day it's been a fight. During the position, we were fighting and fighting and fighting, and today it looks like the climax is reached. So you think this is, in a sense, the last scene of a long-running movie which has had many twists and turns. You've gone through a very difficult period which started with your father's passing away. Did you ever think you would be in this position one day when YSR was there? No, I'll be absolutely never. When dad was there, I mean, it's even impossible to think or comprehend into a situation like this. Because he was in Congress, he was the tallest leader probably in Congress, and uh, everything was absolutely going great. I mean, you had no interest at that time in politics I at was, all. Yeah, I was not. I was a reluctant entrant into politics. In fact, in 2004, I wanted to become an MP. That was because you know, when younger, the next generation just came in, so I thought, you know, it would be good. But then 2004, somehow, it didn't work out. After that, I I just confined uh, to helping my father and my father's constituents. That's it. And uh, beyond that, I never wanted to enter into politics. Uh, we had, uh, we had, I was the chairman of the Sakshi uh, Media House, and it was an attractive. In fact, why do you need to get into politics when every politician would come to you directly when you're running a media house? You know, look at how the world changed. I mean, there would be no two states possibly of Andhra Pradesh if YSR was still around. I mean, that's how that event changed the course of history of the state, in a way. I mean, is this election, in a sense, for you, about your father's legacy, your attempt to keep the legacy going? You said that you didn't, you were a reluctant politician. Why then did you make this decision to enter politics? It was, I entered politics when my father was alive, in 2009. Uh, in 2009, he he pushed me into politics. He said, you know, you have a good heart, you should come into politics. And he pushed me into politics. After that, within 100 days, he passed away. And you know, that actually changed. Now then, the situation was, I was already in it. I gave a word at my father's death place, at, at his crash site. And uh, there was so much of sentiment attached to it because I gave a word and he was known to be a person who never, back, who never backtracked on a word. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when I had visited my father's crash site in that condolence meeting that was organized the a huge meeting, I gave a word that I will go visit every house which had given up their lives to my dad because that is my family. And there was no, I mean, you asked me why I gave that word, there is no, uh, there is nothing that I have said as to why I gave that word. Just an emotional statement that was made. And that word changed my entire Destiny. So in a sense, Andhra Pradesh's destiny was changed, your destiny is changed, because I've often wondered, had the Congress in 2009, is it true that all you wanted was the Andhra Pradesh Congress Chief's post? No, no. Had, had Sonia Gandhi agreed to that, you would have stayed within the Congress. It is never about uh, the Congress, Chief, Chief, Congress Chief's post or Chief Minister's post or any of these things would actually trigger all this. Uh, in fact, to be fair, they said they will give me Chief Minister's post. They said they will also make me as a Central Minister, or later they will also make me Chief Minister. To be fair, 
But it is not that what actually triggered this. In fact, I had given a word at my father's class after his passing away. It was just 20 days after his passing away that I had gone to my father's class set and I said I will visit every house which will be one of their lives to live. And that word somehow I wanted to do it and it took and I, I prevailed on Congress party. I didn't even know, I never even knew because I was new to politics. I, was, I never even knew that we had to take somebody's permission to give a word like that also. And in fact, you know, I prevailed on them. I would have probably met Sonia Gandhi at least thrice. I would have probably met uh, Ahmed Patel at least six, seven times. And I prevailed on them to just give me permission to go visit every house who had given up their lives for my dad. This is the Odarpu Yatra yeah. that you took at the time. And you know, because you know, after my dad's passing away, out of shock, or out of you know, some of the critics who said as well, there was there was there was there was this you know, yeah, around about six, seven hundred, more than eight hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred people who passed away there. Mm -hmm. And I gave that word, and somehow these people did not want me to do it. The Congress leadership did not want me to do it. Said that you cannot go on this yatra. No. That was the reason what actually triggered everything. They said you call everybody to one single location. And then, you know, you do whatever help you want to do. I said, nobody asked for any help from me. It is an emotional decision that I took that I would go visit every house who had given up their lives for my dad. So you're saying something important. You're saying the Congress actually was ready to offer you the Chief Minister's post at the time. To be fair to them, I don't want to leave anybody. At the but they were not willing to allow you to go on this Yatra. And that for you was the trigger point to set up the YSRCP. In a way, or to break out on your it, own. It is not. It is not these post vote matter. In fact, they said we will make you the central minister. Later, we will also make you the chief minister. That's not the issue there. To be fair, because I don't want to make any, you know, any, uh, any allegations on them that that is not right. But the, the fact is, if I, Did if you, I, I look, what is the point in me taking any post and uh, foregoing uh, the word that I had given up? The very word what I had given to my father, that is trash site. So is this election now, and we'll turn to the present in a moment, is this election in a sense for you to take revenge on the Congress? Because the Congress in a sense has suffered both in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh after the split. So is YSR Congress looking to first, in a sense, prove a point today? Are you proving a point to the Gandhi family in Delhi, to the leaders in Delhi that, look, you didn't let me go on this Odarpu Yatra, I went on it. Today, look, 10 years later, I could be the Chief Minister of Andhra. There is no... Why should I prove anything to anybody like this? I, I believe in God, and I believe vengeance is us. You know? What I am currently doing today is, 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 is what I think is best for my people. And I've stood with them for the past 10 years. I've been... I'm going to see my 10-year track record in, in politics. They would find me most of the time in, in people. But you also had a difficult time, let's be honest. You know, you went to jail for more than 12 months. Serious charges of bribery were put against you. Chandra Babu Naidu still sort of says that, you know, the corruption charges are completely valid. You have to come every Friday to Hyderabad to, to appear in, uh, in court. You face serious charges. People say you misused your father's position to for bribery, for cuts, for commissions. That also still haunts you. See, the fact is, uh, uh, this. when my father was the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, I was neither an MP, I was neither an MLA. I never set my foot in a secretariat. Worst is, I was not even in Hyderabad. I've never met anybody. I don't. Uh, I don't know any IAS officers. I don't know any IPS officers. I've never. I don't even know any ministers. I've never made any phone calls to any of them. I was not even in Hyderabad. I was in Bangalore with my children studying in Bangalore. I was in Bangalore. At best, probably I was going to my constituency, what is also very close to Bangalore, and probably once in a while that too. But the CBI came with a very detailed list: disproportionate assets, influencing investors. Anyone wanted a project in Hyderabad, go to Jagan Mohan Reddy. You know they have come up with a voluminous charge sheet, which continues to haunt you even now when you're bidding uh, for power in Andhra Pradesh. What would you say? Do you do you concede at the end of the day that this is something that you will have to live with? You know the fact is the fact is that if it's, it's not something difficult or it's not something that doesn't happen to frame charges on somebody who's in opposition. 
see when my father, I, I had no cases on me when my father was the chief priest. I had no cases on me when my father was the father. I had no cases on me as long as I was in Congress party. So when were these cases framed on me? It was only after I left the Congress party that I took on a battle with the central government. And who were the petitioners in my case? None other than Congress people, and none other than Chandra Babu Naidu himself. His own party members, Telugu Desham party members, are petitioners in my case. None other than Congress party members are petitioners in my case. It is only at that stage when these people saw me as a, as a, as a political rival or political uh, rival that they came on with vengeance. You're saying, therefore, the Congress High Command leadership, along with Chandra Babu Naidu, in a sense, plotted Absolutely. to fix you? Absolutely. So you, you're confident of, of, of being cleared in all these cases? Absolutely right. It's the fact of the story is, see, see the fact of the story is, you know, these kind of charges what these people have, what these people have leveled against me, they're so baseless. These are all political and they would just, and they would just go away in, in, given the time. Okay, let's uh, turn to breakfast because uh, with breakfast I want to ask you about about Andhra today and what this election campaign is all about because obviously this is your your big challenge and I'm going to ask you what are the issues this time in this Andhra election now you give a good Andhra breakfast or not sure yeah I when I come to South India uh, Jagan I always look for breakfast you guys make better breakfast than they do in the north great Where do you want him to go? Yes, sit here. This side? Okay.